Today we're taking our first look at Windows 11 and the accessibility it has to offer for the blind and visually impaired. Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to the channel where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. Windows 11 brings a lot of visual changes to the Windows operating system, but how about the accessibility? How has that changed? Let's go ahead and take a look at the Windows 11 accessibility. So the first thing I'll say right away, if you're not familiar with Windows 11 yet, um, it's a lot of just visual changes. So a lot of the aspects of the operating system are gonna be the same as they were in Windows 10. It's just they look slightly different. Maybe the items are in just slightly different areas, but it's all basically the same. So for example, our start menu now is in the middle of the screen. You can ch change this back to the left side if you're more comfortable with that. But um, even though the start menu looks different, it has all the basic things that we had before. So you can customize these items up here and set your what apps you want to show up there. You've got a recommended setting down here based on what you're doing, what how you use the computer. You've got your power button down here at the bottom right, your account information here at the bottom left, and you still have your search. So if I just start, start typing something, Store, for example, it shows up here, the store, just like it did before. So that's the most important thing to remember is that even though these things look slightly different, it still has a lot of the same things that it did in Windows 10. Now, jumping into the settings, let's go into accessibility. And it used to be called ease of access. And this is one of the new changes now they have just renamed it to accessibility. And that makes more sense, has the little accessibility icon guy there. Uh, this is kind of the universal verbiage and icon and every, everybody uses this, so it makes sense that Windows would jump to that as well. I'm gonna click on that and all of our accessibility settings have popped up over here on the right side. The first section here is vision. That's probably what most of us are interested in. The middle section here is hearing and the bottom is interaction. So back up to vision here. We'll go through all the options here. The first is text size. The second one is visual effects. Then you've got mouse pointer and touch, text cursor, magnifier, color filters, contrast themes, and windows narrator. So once again, same items we had before, just in kind of a new package. Let's jump into text size. If I click on that, then the text sizing window pops out here and I can adjust the size here, this little slider, and then click apply to change that. Uh, one thing to note, obviously though, is there's a balance between text that's too big and it's getting cut off and causing issues that way versus text that's too small and you can't read it. Um, so. You might need to come in here and play around a little bit, make it larger, then apply it and see if that works for you. You might need to go back down a little bit, but you can do that in here. Next, we'll look at visual effects. And we've got several items in here. Always show scroll bars, transparency effects, animation effects, dismiss notifications after this amount of time. And then at the bottom is the related items like we used to have in Windows 10. All right, so I made the window smaller so we could illustrate this. Um, always show scroll bars. So if you have a window that scrolls like this one does now, then over here to the side, you're gonna have a scroll bar. And if I turn that on, now we see this scroll bar here. Let me zoom in. So there's the scroll bar and I can scroll up and down. But if I turn that off, the scroll bar minimizes and then eventually disappears. Turning that on means that the scroll bar is always there and it won't disappear after a while. Next one is transparency effect. If I turn that on, difficult to see, but there's the window is actually slightly transparent. So for example, if I put this window over here and then bring up my start menu, you can see the edge of that window underneath the start menu and you can see this blue color popping through from the background because this start menu here is slightly transparent. So if I turn that off, this window got darker. And now this 
start menu is a solid color. We don't see that uh, window underneath poking through or that blue color poking through. So I prefer to have transparencies turned off personally. It makes it easier to see my windows. Animation effects, I have those turned on. For So for example, when I click my start button, my start menu pops up from the bottom. So if I were to turn that off and I click my start menu, it just pops in. You don't get that animation. It just, bam, it's just automatically there. So if I turn that off again, now my animation of that window popping up. The animations don't bother me. I kind of like them, so I leave mine on, but you can turn it off if they are uh, interfering with you. Dismiss notifications. Whenever you get a notification, it pops out at the bottom here, and this is just how long it will stay out. So if you're zoomed in a lot like I am, you may want to lengthen this amount of time so that the, you don't miss notifications. Generally, there's a sound effect that accompanies the notification. So I always kind of scoot down here to see what that is. But if you find yourself missing your notifications, not getting there in time, you can change this time amount here. All right, now we go to mouse pointers and touch. So just like before, we have our different mouse pointer options. We can increase the size of the mouse if we want to. And then you can choose to turn on a touch indicator if you want. And don't forget that you can choose a colored mouse. So if you want like a bright yellow, you can do that or a, whatever that is, green. <laughs> I can't tell what that is. You can also add your own custom color by clicking the plus sign here and you can choose whatever color under the rainbow. Text cursor, this was added in to uh, Windows 10 pretty recently within the last two years or so. And this just allows you to adjust how your text cursor looks here. When you're entering text, you can have these bright colors. You can change the size of those. Uh, this is all exactly the same. Adjust how thick the text cursor is, all of that. Magnifier. So magnifier, you can turn it on, turn it off. You can adjust the magnification level here. Uh, just like before, we can choose how much you magnify in. This is great. Um, by default, it's set to 100%, but if someone just needs a little bit of magnification, they could maybe just do the 5%, and you see it just zooms in and zooms out just a little bit. I just keep it on 100, that works well for me. I'm just what I'm used to. You can adjust your view, uh, the same ones we've had before, docked, full screen, or lens. None of this is different. Then you can learn more about the magnifier and it just opens up, ooh, and it's bright. Let's get out of that. <laughs> uh, it just opens up a browser. Appearance, invert the colors, smooth the edges, yes or no, that should always be on. Um, and then the reading down here, the magnifier reader, you've got, you can set your modifier key here off to the side. Um, and then it has the keyboard commands for the reader. Uh, so you see just all the same stuff that we're pretty much familiar with. Color filters, this is for, uh, if you need to adjust the color filters for a color blindness or something like that, you can do that in here. Contrast themes. Now I'm gonna save this for another video, a dedicated video just for contrast themes because this is a big section that's gotten a lot of changes um, or improvements, I guess. There's a lot more variety than we used to have. So I'm definitely gonna come back and um, explore this further in a future video. And then finally, Windows Narrator. I will probably spend some time in this as well because this is a big section uh, in a future video also. I'll kind of dive deep into all of this. But um, Narrator has been improved, constantly being improved. Narrator dialog, okay, but s -s subtract. Add, don't show again, check box unchecked. Turn off Narrator, but exiting Narrator. <laughs> there you go. So we'll come back and look at that. So those are the basics for the Windows 11 accessibility for the blind and visually impaired. 
Uh, you can see that it's basically the same stuff that we've had before. And I haven't had any issues with the accessibility, Windows magnifier, any of that. Everything seems to be working fine. Magnifier reader. The blind life is a representation of what is going on in my life and what I enjoy, all from the visually impaired perspective. I don't seem to be having the bug that Windows 10 had with um, magnifier where at higher magnification, when you went up to one of the corners and then pulled it back to the center, it would kind of get stuck on that side. The mouse pointer would get stuck. Doesn't seem to be doing that now in Windows 11. Seems to be working pretty well. Of course, I'm gonna keep on playing around with it and I'll let you guys know if I discover anything. Uh, stay tuned for a dedicated video on the high contrast themes and a dedicated video on Windows Narrator. And if there's something specific you guys are curious about with Windows 11 accessibility, let me know in the comments down below. All right, guys, thank you very much for checking out that video, our first look at Windows 11 accessibility. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to help out. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and also leave a comment down below to let me know what you think. All of this helps out the channel and I would definitely appreciate it. Also, make sure you're subscribed to The Blind Life so you can stay up to date with all the videos coming out in the future, including more Windows 11 accessibility videos. But that's it, guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. This is Sam with The Blind Life. I'll see you next time.